Pedro Alexander Medina is founder and chief analytics officer at Haystack LLC, which is an advanced agency specializing in custom managed solutions across the data value chain. With deep expertise in information management and advanced analytics, his mission is to help organizations optimize their strategic data assets by converting complex data into intelligence, intelligence into innovation, and innovation into success. I'm your host, Rajiv, and welcome to our show, Pedro. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you very much for having me, and thank you for inviting me to your podcast. As you mentioned, I am the founder of Haystack LLC. We are an advanced analytics agency based in the Twin Cities, and we are experts at uh, providing solutions to Mm -hmm. small to medium businesses across the data value chain. We consider ourselves a team of specialized data scientists that can help most businesses with most any problems uh, related to their data. That includes predictive modeling, that includes data visualization and BI, that includes back-end data integration and ETL, uh, and, and so forth. So, great being here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, a few years ago, my colleague Eric Ness and I participated in your data science competition. It was through the organization Analyze This, and your host at that time was Science Museum of Minnesota. And we worked on a really cool project on analyzing customer behavior using logistic regression. Can you please tell us more about Analyze This and its history and what was the inspiration behind it? Sure. So Analyze This was born from a rather frustrating experience at a hackathon. And so this was a one-day hackathon where we were expected to gather into teams and have a complete data science solution at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And... You know, with your background in analytics, I'm sure you're aware mm-hmm. that one day is not enough nope. to <laughs> dig deep into the data yep. and to really pull valuable insights from that data. And so at the very end of the day, most of the teams probably had maybe, you know, some, mm-hmm. you know, low level insights and maybe a PowerPoint slide. And But I just thought that we can do a lot more. And so then the idea was born, well, why don't we turn this into a quarter-long analytics challenge where Mm -hmm. teams of data scientists can compete for an entire quarter on a very specific problem, giving them enough time to delve and dig deep into that data set, really uh, extract profound insights from that data, Mm -hmm. and deliver a solution that mm-hmm. would be of, of, of high value to, uh, to that stakeholder, be it a nonprofit or, or what have you. And so we, you're familiar with, with Kaggle, right? Yes, I've heard of them, yep. Yep, so Kaggle is an online platform mm-hmm. uh, for data science competitions. Many top Fortune 500 businesses have contributed or participated in these challenges. For example, uh, Netflix did the uh, Netflix Prize, where they awarded over a million dollars to the winning data science team several years ago. And so you can think of Analyze This, Mm -hmm. crowdsourced data science, as a Kaggle Mm -hmm. for the real world. So we try to make our challenges as uh, real world as possible, meaning... We want our competitors to learn and understand what real data science is, what the limitations of your typical data infrastructure or data quality issues or any Mm -hmm. of these obstacles that are thrown in front of a data scientist on a day-to-day basis, and to compete not only on accuracy, Mm -hmm. but on things like business insights, the quality of your visualizations and your presentations, Mm -hmm. and all of these non- technical areas as well. So it's more of a complete solution that we expect from our members. And therefore, uh, the end result is usually a much greater uh, value and quality for for our stakeholders. Okay, that's great. I remember like you you also hold like uh, technical presentations on your monthly meetup, meetup. Is that right? Yes. So we have we invite a number of local data science experts and luminaries to come and speak to our group Mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. Uh, These tend to be individuals who may have some expertise in the very specific challenge we may be holding that Mm -hmm. uh, particular quarter. For example, we recently completed a challenge for Habitat for Humanity, and we built a predictive model to Mm -hmm. help them raise their fundraising, increase their fundraising, 
while reducing their marketing costs. Oh, awesome. And we invited a gentleman by the name of Josh Burkholz, who mm -hmm. happens to be the foremost expert in fundraising analytics to mm -hmm. come present to our group. And so it's these types of high value, high quality presenters and, 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 and just gatherings where we come together as a group trying to promote the data science community, especially here in the Twin Cities. Nice. When do you uh, generally meet and do, does your venue change month to month basis? So we meet monthly. We tend to meet on the second, I want to say Wednesday. Yes, it's Wednesday of mm -hmm. every month. And we have been meeting consistently at the Carlson School of Business oh, nice. here at the University of Minnesota. However, we're open to switching that up and so on occasion we've met at the University of St. Thomas mm -hmm. uh, and other places as well but that has been our home mm -hmm. um, I'd want to say for maybe the past uh, eight months or so. Great that's wonderful. I believe uh, your organization have an upcoming competition on artificial intelligence. Have you decided on what kind of AI framework will, be, will you be using whether Google TensorFlow or Cortana Intelligence Suite? What can you share today about that? Yes. So our next challenge, we've um, so we've just wrapped the Habitat challenge mm -hmm. uh, last month, and in July we are planning on kicking off our next challenge, which will be a first of its kind mm -hmm. uh, AI challenge. Mm -hmm. So we're calling it AT, uh, short for Analyze This. Okay. Does AI, mm -hmm. and we are very excited about this because. Uh, we have never seen a similar challenge to that. Mm -hmm. And our goal for putting together this, this artificial intelligence ch uh, challenge is primarily to demystify AI. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question around what platform we plan to use, mm -hmm. the goal is to use Google's TensorFlow okay. to build uh, a neural net model. And as I mentioned, we really want to demystify AI. And what I mean by that is that we keep hearing these stories about how artificial intelligence and machine learning mm -hmm. are taking over our jobs, are taking over society, the robots are coming. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of scary stories out there that people tend to listen to on the news. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we fear what we don't know. And th so the purpose of this challenge is to give individuals, both individuals who have deep expertise in artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but also those who may not have any background whatsoever in artificial intelligence. We want to give those individuals an opportunity to come in, mm -hmm. uh, sort of lift the veil uh, mm -hmm. of, you know, artificial intelligence and AI, and to understand, you know, what the limitations, what the potential is for the technology, and to understand yep. that it's really not that scary, mm -hmm. uh, and how powerful these technologies can be to help us as a society. And so really to demystify, to mm -hmm. come together and to learn as a group, mm -hmm. uh, one of the, f you know, foundational motivations behind Analyze This is that, you know, there's this personal philosophy uh, that I have that you learn mm -hmm. by doing. Yep. You know, conceptual understanding is, is, is insufficient. Mm -hmm. You actually have to sit down and produce mm -hmm. and write the code and wrangle the data and do mm -hmm. all of these things that are difficult but that ultimately lead to greater understanding. And if you're able to do this together as a group, number one, it makes the experience much more pleasant, much yep. more fun. And mm -hmm. number two, you're able to learn a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Reason being is that we encourage our teams to have a diversity of skill sets. So for example, we often try to have someone who is a, a practicing data scientist on every team. Uh, then we probably have a number of individuals who may have some experience, they may yep. be analysts, they may be proficient in working with data or possibly even programmers who may be proficient in coding. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you may have one or two uh, total novices mm -hmm. who have no background whatsoever in data science, and that's yep. okay because mm -hmm. they can't contribute. And mm -hmm. what happens is that knowledge tends to flow downhill. Mm -hmm. It tends to, uh, you learn through it from your peers, mm -hmm. uh, your more seasoned, more experienced peers, and so you're able to learn faster. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, the driving force or, you know, the, the, the vision for Analyze This is twofold, knowledge and community. We want to build knowledge mm -hmm. and we want to build community by bringing everyone together nice. around data science and, analy and mm -hmm. analytics. Awesome. As it relates to your work, uh, I've heard uh, about uh, you mentioning about Alteryx platform. It sounds really cool. And now, can you tell us some interesting use case for it? 
Sure. So Alteryx is a complete analytics platform mm -hmm. that I am incredibly excited about. Okay. It is a technology platform that is taking off mm -hmm. uh, like wildfire. Mm -hmm. And it is a GUI drag and drop mm -hmm. interface okay. for data science and analytics. Oh, nice. It helps you, I mean, and just think about what that means. Mm -hmm. Most organizations, those who hire data scientists, mm -hmm. They tend to concentrate the data scientists around much more high-level problems, mm -hmm. high-level challenges that require an understanding, a deeper yep. understanding of technology, the ability to code, whether that be in Python or, or R mm -hmm. or some other language. Mm -hmm. But the true insight or the true subject matter expertise mm -hmm. may not necessarily lie with the data scientist or with your team of data scientists it most often lies with your frontline staff, your line of business staff, as they call it. Okay. These are your day-to-day -day analysts. These are your day-to-day -day, um, uh, contributors who interface with systems and technology and with data. Mm -hmm. But they may not have the ability to code, and they may not have any interest in learning okay. how to code. They may not want to learn how to code, and they, and to, and truth be told, they shouldn't have to learn how to code to extract insight from the data that they work with every day. These individuals understand their business. Mm -hmm. They understand the departments that they work in. They understand okay. the challenges that they're facing every day. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to liberate, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, the data that they work with every day at their fingertips to mm -hmm. extract the insights that they want, yep. that business is able to generate insights that were never before possible at mm -hmm. a speed that was never before possible because so, now okay. you don't have to wait for your team of data scientists to, to hard code the solution and then test the models and then come back and then maybe work with one subject matter expert to help dictate how that project is go should go or what insights are valuable and which insights aren't. You're bringing data science down to the level of that, mm. that, that, that frontline individual. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that data science as a whole is, is going to go away. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. This is not truly self-serve data science, mm -hmm. but this is self-serve analytics. Okay. So it sounds like uh, almost like one of the um, slogan Power BI uses, like uh, self-service BI for the masses. So you're, uh, you think that uh, that'd be similar to self-service uh, advanced analytics for the masses? I think that's a, a great way of putting it. Okay. And awesome. that, is, that is the power of Alteryx. And it's, it started off uh, you know, as a spatial analytics mm -hmm. and uh, ETL tool, mm -hmm. but it has, incorporated, it has incorporated everything from predictive modeling mm -hmm. to even artificial intelligence now. Okay. So it, nice. yeah, and it, you can <laughs> connect to an unlimited number of data sources. Mm -hmm. That's really where the power of Alteryx lies. So is it easy to get uh, its trial edition or get access to it? Or? Oh, yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. So it, just visit uh, uh, alteryx.com. Okay. So A-L-T-E-R-Y-X.com. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, you can download a 14-day mm -hmm. uh, free trial version okay. of, the, of, the, of the platform. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. I'll check it out. Um, now, uh, another question I have is, um, do they have some, uh, like, uh, proof of concept examples in their gallery in somewhere? Uh, do you know if they have good community support, uh, just like uh, Python or R does in GitHub or anything like that? Oh, absolutely. So Alteryx has a growing online community. Mm -hmm. uh, any problems that you might have, any sort of technical issues or challenges mm -hmm. that you might have, uh, you're just, a, you know, a few seconds away from, from a solution from one of the many Alteryx aces, as they're called. Mm -hmm. uh, they're working the communities all day, every day, uh, helping to answer any questions that members might have. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of uh, self-paced uh, learning resources that you can use. And, and to keep in mind, because this is GUI, mm -hmm. because this is all visual drag and drop, yep. think of it as playing with Lego blocks. Mm -hmm. 
you're developing a workflow. So in Alteryx, it's called a workflow. Okay. And so you're bringing in your data. You're mm -hmm. con you have these connectors that will connect to data wherever it lives. Okay. You can bring in an unlimited number of different data sources, be mm -hmm. they databases, be they flat files, be they text files, be they mm -hmm. you know, uh, Excel spreadsheets or access data. It doesn't matter where the data lives. You can bring it all in to one place. Okay. You can prep it. You can cleanse it. You can transform the data. You can build the analytical data set, and you can build your model all in one place. Nice. And do so visually, mm -hmm. putting together these little Lego blocks. Okay. So it's very intuitive. So um, I have a question. Uh, you know, like Anaconda ID, that's another tool for data scientists and um, also incorporates a bunch of different Python and R uh, distribution within itself. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed it has something called IDE. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I noticed it has something called Orange, and which seems like uh, it, it can do many of the data science ta tasks visually. Um, so is uh, Alteryx, Orange, and some of the offering from Microsoft, let's say uh, Azure ML Studio, also uh, a GUI interface. Uh, are they like similar or any idea how they uh, compare have, th have there been any independent study done on them by, say, Gartner or some other independent body? Yes. So Gartner has actually ranked uh, Alteryx very highly on oh, their nice. magic quadrant. Actually, it's the highest mm -hmm. ranked uh, GUI-based mm -hmm. analytics platform um, around right now. It is it is the the foremost leader in this space. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been doing it the longest, and I'd say that they they do it the best. Mm -hmm. uh, and the beauty of Alteryx as well, keep in mind, is that it integrates Python and R mm -hmm. very nicely. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to lose out on any of the work that you've already done in mm -hmm. any of these other open source uh, technologies. Yep. You, If you're more comfortable coding in R or if you're more comfortable coding in Python, mm -hmm. that's okay. You can bring in your your code Mm -hmm. into any Alteryx uh, workflow mm -hmm. and combine it with additional data prep and ETL. And, 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 and if you want to visualize that data, for instance, Alteryx lets you publish those data sources directly to Tableau, Power mm -hmm. BI, and so forth. So that's why I say it is a complete end-to-end -end analytics platform from mm -hmm. data ingestion to data preparation all the way out to uh, data visualization, mm -hmm. you can do it in one place, you can do it visually. Mm -hmm. And and what, you know, and, and another benefit of doing, of, of Alteryx is that it cuts the time to insight, that mm -hmm. window. It cuts it down by, I've seen instances where it can cut the, the, the development time from, by about 60, 40 to 60 percent or more. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to invest all of this time in hard coding a solution. Yep. So it's a very quick turnaround. Again, th you're opening up these analytical capabilities to your day-to-day -day, uh, individuals that mm -hmm. work with, the, with these systems but may not have the ability to code. And, and so the turnaround is, is, is much faster the quality of the insights tend to have much more are much more pertinent and have more mm -hmm. impact towards the business. Yep. And so it is. I, I couldn't say enough about Alteryx. I have mm -hmm. been uh, beyond impressed. And as someone that comes from the R language world, mm -hmm. I love R. I work primarily out of R Studio. I, I absolutely am. In, you know, I love the language. I continue to work with it on a daily basis. But I I have to. I feel that the future of analytics and data science is going to be much more GUI based. Mm -hmm. I think that, again, democratizing analytics mm -hmm. and data science is where the future is going. And tools like Alteryx are going to be mm -hmm. the pathway yep. uh, for that for that future. Nice. Uh, kind of almost answered my next question about where you think the future of analytics and business intelligence is going toward. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to add to that? No, that's a, actually, it's a great segue. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So 
As, as I mentioned, you know, GUI-based tools like Alteryx really are the future. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, most businesses have issues with, you know, just consistency of their code base. Mm -hmm. um, being able to easily transfer, um, you know, a model or a solution that was built by one team and have it be quickly consumed and used by another team, for instance. And there, and it's not a frictionless process. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult process to have this code documented properly, to have it be understood uh, uniformly throughout the organization. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, is this, is that type of friction that slows the process of insights mm -hmm. down? And, and and so for for most businesses, that's it's it's obviously a high cost issue mm -hmm. because it's ju it just takes longer to extract the insights that you want from that data. Uh, sometimes the models uh, could take many weeks or many months to develop. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they're not even used. You know that's another that's kind of a dirty little secret in data science, right? Mm -hmm. I've heard estimates of upwards of eighty to ninety percent of the models that are built. Mm -hmm. ultimately don't find their way to production. Mm -hmm. And so that's an enormous cost for these businesses. Mm -hmm. Now imagine, if you will, that instead of having all of that, you know, take place, you are now able to iterate and experiment mm -hmm. on a, you know, on a minute by minute, hour by hour basis. Mm -hmm. These insights are coming to you at the speed of business, right? Mm -hmm. And, and again, your line of business staff, the, the, the individuals that work with these systems every day, mm -hmm. are able to generate those insights, understand what's valuable and what isn't, discard mm -hmm. what is not valuable, and then only work with what's good. And yep. then deliver those insights throughout the business mm -hmm. um, just as quickly. And because this is all visual drag and drop, it almost documents itself. So mm -hmm. it's very easy for someone to go into a workflow, understand what it's trying to do, what it's trying to accomplish, get up to speed, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and use it mm -hmm. almost immediately. And so is that sort of consistency of the code based and the workflow based in this, in this case, uh, the, the, the speed, the turnaround, the reduction in that time to insight window mm -hmm. uh, that can have a, a massive impact. And then the uniformity of using one platform uh, for most of, of, of your of your data work mm -hmm. is useful because a lot of a lot of organizations have they adopt so many different technologies and mm -hmm. one team is using this technology over here, mm -hmm. another team is using another technology over there. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is this this tower of Babel where people are not speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're, uh, again, generating more friction, slowing the process down mm -hmm. and 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 the, and the business suffers because of that. Now, mm -hmm. if everyone uses, you know, it's is using the same technology under the, speaking the same language, then that business is able to uh, generate greater efficiencies day to day mm -hmm. from their analytics. So that's where the future is going. Mm -hmm. I think you know right now most businesses can t will will admit that analytics and data science. Uh, is a bottleneck mm -hmm. in their organizations. There's so much data, yep. and there's going to be much more data coming mm -hmm. over the years, right? And it's it's not going to slow down. And so there is a tsunami mm -hmm. of data uh, coming to us, uh, both in IoT and in all of these other technologies that are coming online every day. Mm -hmm. um, and so the bottleneck is how do you extract knowledge from so much data. And so that's what organizations suffer from. It's, it's just this bottleneck of insight, the, the slowness and the turnaround. And so mm -hmm. technologies like these are, are simply going to help reduce that friction. And so that's where I think the future of analytics and data science is going to be. Nice. Wonderful. And can you tell us where our listeners can connect with you, either Twitter or social media or any other professional, you know, uh, networking sites? Sure, absolutely. So our website is www.haystackdata.com. Again, that's haystackdata.com. Our phone number is 
8068. And our Twitter, uh, you can find us on Twitter at haystack underscore data. Great. And what about uh, Analyze This? Analyze This, you can find us on Meetup. Okay. Great. At Meetup, simply search for mm -hmm. Analyze This, okay. crowdsourced data science. Great. That's awesome. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Rajib. It was great. Thank Same you very here. much for having me. Thank you.